Welcome back to the eighth part of this tutorial series, which I've shown you how to put your Star Wars The Old Republic character in a Battlefront 2. So in this one, we're going to be doing some UI stuff. So like the portraits, the text edits, the ability icons slash uh, weapon icons. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off with the portrait here. So this is just a blank new Blender project. I'm going to show you start to finish how to do this. So to start off with, we can go ahead and delete the default cube and import our character model. Go ahead and get him in here, perfect. We can hide the skeleton because we don't need that at the moment. So let's go ahead and get our camera set up. We can set all of these transforms here to zero because we don't need any of that to be anything. Then we can move it back a little bit and rotate him up 90 degrees. Then we're actually going to change the size of the camera. So we're going to select that. We're going to go to this tab right here and change it to 256 by 256 because that is the dimensions of our character portrait. Then we're going to change the focal length of the camera by doing something like this. And about that. That seems good. Then we'll just move it up to line up a little bit closer with the head. You can click this camera thing to kind of see a little bit better, kind of lining up with the head decently, which is what we want. So now let's go ahead and get the actual textures in here. We're going to need to append our project here with those node groups that I uh, we've used before, I think, in the te Making Textures video. So there was a link in that description to all these node, node files, and there'll be a link in this description as well. So we just have to click Append and then find them. All right, all of mine are right here. So we'll just go ahead and click Append. And now we can set up our textures. So we'll click our character. Don't need this or this. Go ahead and add the group. Uh, Uber. Select Shader to Surface. And it's just like you did before to text, test the textures in Blender. We're going to make three image textures to separate RGB converters. In the very first one, we're going to be putting our CS color in base color, alpha in smoothness. Then our NM, which is going to be the R in normal X, G in normal Y, B in metalness. And then we're going to make sure to set that to non-color. And then finally, we're just going to do the AOSL, which is the R in AO. Just like that. So we can also copy this and paste it onto the actual other piece of the body because this we, we use the same textures for that. So there are our textures in Blender. As you can see, it looks very nice. The next step is I'm going to change my render engine here from EV to Cycles, just because I think that works best. Uh, also going to go into Film here and click Transparent. And then that way our render should be looking something like this right now. And then you want to make sure in your Dimensions tab that this file format is set to RGBA as well. You want to make sure that's a thing. Okay, so the only thing we're missing here now is lights, which we actually have a couple of. We already have one of back here, so we can move that a little bit closer but it's only one light, so it's not going to look the best for your portrait. What I'd like to do is I'd like to do three lights, and so I'll go ahead and copy and paste this twice more, and we'll just kind of move them around. We can go into Render View here, and we'll do one light, say like right in the back. And then a couple other lights on either side of him. So this is going to look really awful, first of all. Um, but we can go ahead and mess with the power values in this tab right here. It's set to a thousand. Let's go ahead and lower that all the way down to like 50 for each of these to start off with. 
There we go, that's looking pretty good. By the way, and if you're having some issues here, like I can see some problems here when I go into render view, and my model is looking a little bit messed up in the render view, we can actually fix this really simply. If we go ahead and click this, um, what it doesn't like is it doesn't like that this, the uh, color and the smoothness are in the same thing. So we can go ahead and copy that over, remove the base color, and then just kind of put the base color from the copied one in, and that will make things look a little bit stretch that. You should still have the old uh, color file that you use to import into Substance, and you could just put that in, which is basically the C, uh, just the base color on its own, and then that should work. Yeah, there we go. Wasn't happening around my character's head in this instance, but I just feel it was worth mentioning because it might be happening to you. Okay, so the next step is we actually want to pose this guy a little bit. So let's go ahead and go back into viewport display, set that to stick in front. And then we're just going to move his neck and his head a little bit, just so he doesn't look like he's standing straight up, looking straight at the camera. Because that doesn't make for the best portrait. None of the characters in Battlefront portraits actually do that. They all kind of have a little bit of a pose going on. And that's what makes a good portrait. So we can just turn his head a little bit there, see how that looks. Okay, so I think I've got a pose and a look that I quite like. So now we can just go ahead and click Render, Render Image, and that's going to create our portrait for us. Apologies if, for some reason, my microphone has been cutting a little bit in and out through this. I noticed editing a different part, or a different failed attempt, <laughs> that this was happening. So if it has been happening, then this will be included. If it hasn't been, then this won't be. Anyway, we can go ahead and hit Image, Save As. We can go ahead and save this as Portrait. And I'm going to save as Portrait 3, because I have two other attempts that uh, didn't go so well for the tutorial part. <laughs> OK, so character portraits are going to be here in the UI. Bitmaps, Portrait. You can also use the filter to try to get your portrait that way. And then we can just import the file we just rendered. And boom, we got ourselves a portrait. Of course, that doesn't have to be your final render. I'm still going through and messing with the lights and changing settings uh, and whatnot, just trying to make it look a little bit better constantly. I end up going through like four or five different portraits every time I do this. So now that we've made a portrait, the next step is to make ability icons. And I've actually already done this a few days ago. I just didn't like how the rest of the tutorial part came out, and so I'm just going to kind of nonchalantly insert me making that, you know, icon into this part of the tutorial now. Alright, and that's pretty much that it for that. Now, SVGs are a little bit different. You got Boba Fett. Let's see, Boba Fett has... that's not part of it. Do do do. All of his abilities are kind of bland to Derek. Like, we don't really need to do an ability icon, except for maybe his jetpack. Yeah, you might want to do something for the jetpack. Um, but for the blaster, the blaster is unique. E3, which we have replaced, so we're going to want to replace that as well. There it is, finally found it. EE3. So we can go ahead and export this SVG, and then I'll show you real quick how to make an SVG icon do. And then I'll just do old Alt and my middle class button to move and get a good image that works, like a good side profile. And then I'm just going to snip the tool that, and we're going to put it into Photoshop. Boom, just like that. All right, so now I want to kind of outline it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to get myself a brush, and I'm just going to draw over it. And there's one really neat trick that makes this super easy. It's if you click once on something and then you hold shift and then click somewhere else, it makes a straight line <laughs> from that point, from point A to point B. And that makes drawing stuff like this with the mouse and keyboard so much easier. We got a nice kind of outline, but we're not done yet. I'm going to now fill in some of these spots so it's darker in some areas like up top in the scope we don't really need you know that that should be darker uh let's see that's tough 
trigger maybe and that. That seems good. So that would be our gun icon as gun icon dot png. Now I can go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator, which is the next program we're going to need. Now that we're in Adobe Illustrator, we can go ahead and open up, first of all, the SVG of the EE3 and the gun icon we just made. Let's go ahead and do both of those things. So the SVG we can just straight up delete. We don't need any of it. This thing right here, we're going to go to Window, Image Trace, Trace. Cool. And then we're going to go to Object, Image Trace. Eh, actually, we should probably move this over here and get it to scale first. That seems about right. Yep. Okay, then we'll go Object, Image Trace, Expand, Ungroup. We can delete the border there. Select all of it. We'll go Edit, Colors, Inverts, Colors, and then we're going to save as the same SVG. We're just going to overwrite it because why not? The properties, all we got to do is change this to Presentation, uncheck this, and change this to 3. Then we can hit OK. And then we can go back to here, Import this right here and boom we got a weapon icon just like that and then the final step is the text edits so first things we want to do is go ahead and get frosty open and your uh, localization editor and I will link my favorite one in uh, the description of this video this one allows you to replace bulk text which is super useful so first things first we need to get the file to change the text which you can find in localization English, we can go ahead and open that up, and we just need to copy this binary chunk, open up Tools, Res Chunk Explorer, and then we can paste it, search for it, and then this is the thing we need to export, and then you can just export it into your folder here. I've already done so, and I've already made all my text edit. But just for the tutorial's sake, I'll go ahead and open this up and show you how to do it. So for example, we're going to go ahead and search for Boba Fett. And you can see these are all the things that Boba Fett says. So this one is very useful because you can just type Boba, replace all mention of the name Boba Fett with your character's name. And then hit replace, and it is case sensitive. So we would just go back and change this to this. Replace. And then we just do this for everything, like he has an EE3. We would just change this to his blaster because his blaster doesn't really have a name. And boom. And then there might still be instances where it just says Boba or it just says Fett. So we can search for those as well. And if you're replacing, say, a male character with a female character, then you might want to just actually open the game and then take a look at all the individual start cards and. Uh, descriptions and whatnot to do that and then once you're done you just hit save and then uh, save it with any kind of name you want so back when we did our mesh importing we actually used tiger venom's mesh importing tool which actually comes with an interesting add-on for text um, it lets you automatically import and merge different localization files so you'll actually you may have noticed that in all of my mods, I include an option for frost text, which is this beautiful thing that allows you to uh, open and merge different uh, localization files or dot chunk files. So all you'd have to do is right click the English thing, hit open frost text. You're going to add your, you're going to add the thing you exported and then you just click merge and then boom it's done you don't need to do anything else and you're complete and the beautiful thing about frost text a little bit of a sidebar here this isn't specifically for your mod but if you wanted to use it say for example you do that
and this is why I included all of my mods uh, that I like to do text edits for now because of this feature. <laughs> uh, you can then just kind of include all of these separate chunk files you made for all of these mods that you made, open it up, merge it all together, and boom, you got one mod with text edits for 15 plus characters. You can do as many as you want, obviously. And that's going to do it for this part of the tutorial. We've completed the model, the textures, the weapon model and textures, we've completed the audio, uh, and a whole bunch of UI tweaks. So all that's really left to do is export the mod, give it a few test runs, and uh, see how it works. So I'll see you in that final episode uh, tomorrow, which is probably the day it will upload, the day after this one uploads. <laughs> so I'll see you then.